Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. The live streams represented in this video were mainly focused on a Mars window. So we're sending a whole bunch of missions to Mars. These are not the first missions we sent to Mars. We have two tourists in orbit of Mars already. Uh, they are on a station but have not landed. There have been no Mars landings. And in this case, our new tourist, Your Pops, that is the tourist's name, uh, wanted to land on Mars, so we have to figure that one out. Here I am replacing the Nerva 2 on that stage with a Timberwind. Well, not Timberwind 250. That's too big. You can see that. Uh, so I decided to go with a Timberwind 75 nuclear engine. And so that tank above it is just liquid hydrogen. And otherwise, we've got something that's mainly a duplicate of the previous Mars vessel. So this is a pretty set system and should work because we've already got Kerbals around Mars that rode on one. So this part was no big deal. We are launching on uh, SLS with Raptor boosters and of course the RS-25s on the little shell mice so that they could in theory be recovered. Um, sorry about the lack of sound during the launch for this live stream. I uh, did not have the original recording and so we will have to bear with not having sound for this one. Anyway, here we have booster separation, reserving some fuel in the Raptor boosters for their potential return to launch site. And they do have the grid fins and everything. So off they go. And you can see your pops there. Here's fairing sept. That's always dodgy because these huge procedural fairings have a tendency to blow up stages if not exactly right. But this time it was okay. And there you see the assembly that would be headed off to Mars as we end the core stage. And now we light the nuclear stage. So this will finish up orbit. The shuttle mice, in this case, should be in an okay position to return. Some of our launches during this video, they really won't be in an okay situation to return. If it's too steep uh, angle coming back, it's not good. It's best that the shuttle mice are left in as close to orbit as possible. So this is the final burn here and shut down. So that's our parking orbit in preparation for going to Mars. And this is the trans-Mars injection burn. It's a fairly hefty burn because it's not the best transfer window. It's about 4,200 meters per second to get there. And that's not ideal, but it is what we had. And so that's the whole nuclear stage done. And we are going to use a little bit of yet another nuclear stage, which is on this part. I decided to go with another nuclear engine since this is sandbox and I didn't have to pay for it. Uh, otherwise, it might have been not such a good idea. Also, uh, boil off where we think we can mitigate it. We'll see how that works out for this stage. But in theory, I've got all the multi-layer insulation we need. And, well, liquid hydrogen though. It is a huge liquid hydrogen tank. Anyway, that is how the burn ended up. And we need a minor correction. 10.4 meters per second. Unfortunately, as you saw from the orbits, it's not really in a compatible orbit with our previous mission. That was the existing orbit there. And so it's not going to be able to rendezvous with the existing station around Mars, at least not without some substantial delta V, which we don't really have right now. What you see here, the orange Mars lander was a lander that I had sent in the previous video. I had tried to send the lander first before sending your pops out. And I decided that that wasn't the best idea, so I tried to go for an alternate lander. But I wouldn't say that the idea I came up with next with this Lynx cabin was necessarily safer. It looked better, <laughs> I'll give it that. But I was using the HTV um, pressurized container for the main, main part of the stage and put an extra fuel tank on top. I'm using the ED1 engines, which are methane and oxygen, the 30 kilonewton engines. And I'm using the landing gear from the LEM, the lunar module. So it's a hodgepodge of things. And I decided to use the orange in order to get into orbit around, well, not really to get into orbit around Mars. The heat shield will do it, will do an aero capture, but the orange will help with getting it into orbit around Mars, making sure that we can do mid-course adjustments and everything as well. Anyway, here I'm trying to adapt it to the SLS's EUS tank because we've got that upper part, but we're not using the fairing that came with this mod for that. 
I decided that I wanted to use a procedural fairing instead. So we've got that little adapt structural adapter section so that the tanks can clip into that instead of clipping into the base of the procedural fairings because it's dangerous to clip things into the base of the procedural fairings, at least in my previous experience. Now I brought it all the way to the launch pad, but then I think Mikko had a better idea and that was to use the New Glenn upper stage. And so this is the birth, I, I think this is the birth of the Ultimate Collaborative SLS. So we've got the Raptor boosters, we've got the shuttle mice, and then maybe we'll have the New Glenn upper stage here. And I decided that with the New Glenn upper stage, we can use the New Glenn fairings, which are safer because I made them. Uh, they're not procedural. So they were made with the appropriate force to separate here. And then we'll need a custom interstage to adapt to the SLS core because the other interstage didn't work quite right. And so that's what I'm sizing up right there. And we'll still need another structural part to take care of the upper portion of that main tank. The part that we already had here didn't quite work right. Its nodes were in the wrong place. So anyway, I just put a little structural part with those stripes and we were ready to go. So, well, except we are rotated 90 degrees, but let's ignore that. Uh, it's fine, we'll do a roll procedure maneuver after lifting off. So off we go. And yeah, we'll set the roll there. And it is rolling. With all these engines, it's no problem. I uh, only want to avoid that it be too vigorous, but it looked pretty well controlled there. As you might guess, this sequence of Mars launches will be using this launcher with some modifications just to keep things simple and to get the missions underway. In subsequent Mars windows, I will change things up and use different things. But off go the boosters there. But yeah, once I get into the rhythm of using a particular launcher, it's easier that way, like with just launching a whole bunch of Energias or just launching a whole bunch of these modified SLSs. Keeps things simple. And uh, well, one flaw to this though is that with the heavier New Glenn second stage, it is heavier than the EUS. Uh, that means that the shuttle mice are not getting as close to orbit as they did before. So in one of the launches that we'll see later on, I'll just have it not be reusable with the RS-25, so no shuttle mice, because we, well, they didn't seem to be in a reusable position. So anyway, here is the Mars burn. And in this case, we're using BE-3Us, not nuclear engines. So a little bit more mundane but a little bit faster, though as it turns out, we needed a fairly large correction after that burn. Uh, for some reason, it wasn't as accurate as the previous burn. And so I plot that correction, and once again, it's not going to meet up with Mars Station 1. It's going to be along with all the other missions that we're sending on this window. But there we go, the Lynx lander, and we'll see what happens to that later on. So next up, I decided to send a whole bunch of tugs because it seemed like we might need to move things around in Mars orbit. And so I wanted to send something or some things, in this case, three different tugs, uh, two oranges and one of my old style tugs, all methane and oxygen. And we would uh, see if we needed those. I wanted to capture using the inflatable heat shield, so we had to put that at the bottom, and so I, here I am tweaking the stuff so that it fits in the fairing, and off we go again. Uh, this time we did still have the shuttle mice here. This isn't a very heavy payload though, so the tugs are generally light on their own, of course. When launching the same rocket a bunch of times from the same location, it's nice to have the clouds, because the clouds being different helps change things up a little bit, make things look a little bit different. Since we're meeting a particular window, we're launching at the same time in the day. So the position of the sun doesn't really change either. It's all about those clouds. Anyway, just a random thought there as we have fairing separation. And we are making orbits with the BE-3Us. And there we go. So that is orbit, and they will push us off to Mars. Pretty high delta V requirement there for a Mars trip. 
not really the best transfer window we could have uh, hoped for. But there we go, and we have to separate, and one of the oranges will do the rest of the burns to get it to Mars. There will need to be a correction burn. I decided to do this correction burn right away. Uh, it just seemed like the right thing to do, especially since it was partly retrograde, as you can see. Uh, we just overburned a little bit, it seemed. So I decided I'd be fine to do it right there. And we get a good encounter with a subsequent mid-course correction. That's another 82 meters per second that we need. All right, so we have to orient for power. Make sure the solar panels are pointed in the right way. The upper tug does not have solar panels. It's only the oranges that do. So now we're on to the next live stream, and now we have sound because I have the proper copy of the live stream. And I decided to send a copy of Mars Station 1, so Mars Station 2. Uh, so there's Mars Vessel 1, which is what the original two tourists went to Mars on. That met up with Mars Station 1, and they're combined now into one vessel. And now we're sending a Mars Station 2. However, these Mars stations don't really fit in the fairings very well. So I have to tweak things around, try and tighten it up a little bit. And so once again, that happens to get it into the new Glen fairing, but it manages, it manages. Now this is a very heavy payload for it, which is why I decided to just dump the shuttle mice and go with the RS-25s directly on the core. Especially since the shuttle mice didn't seem to be getting to a serviceable position for recovery anyway if they can be recovered at all. We've tried that before and it's they get through re-entry but actually landing safely is dodgy because of their high uh, stall speed. They are very heavy little shell mice. Alright, for whatever reason I didn't have an action group so I had to shut off the tanks in order to separate the Raptor boosters with fuel still in for return. Uh, though I note that I don't th did we put grid fins on those? I don't know. Anyway, it's sort of a half-hearted uh, nod to recoverability, if you will. Anyway, so you can see that we've got two Briz stages with the Briz expansion tank. Now that would normally have a really huge burn time, but I put five Briz engines. The Briz has one main engine and four verniers, but I put five main engines to cut down on the burn time. A little trick that I do. Cheats, if you will. Not really cheats. I mean, they could do it. Anyway, so that is the end of the BE3U stage. And so it did not complete our transfer burn. And the rest of the transfer burn will have to be done with the Briz stage. And I'm just checking things out there, I guess. Making sure that we're going to decouple the right thing at the right time. And yep. So yes, five of these Briz engines, making sure that the burn time is not too long, and we do have Mars encounter there, but it needed an inclination change, so we're going to have a mid-course adjustment, and after that, we have to pay attention to other missions. So Mars missions are on their way, and now we have to do mid-course adjustments over everything. And I noticed that this Saturn Supply mission, its mid-course adjustment is more than a year late, which is bad. Uh, so we to sort of forgot about it. I guess I didn't add it into Kerbal Alarm Clock or something. So anyway, I have to replot its correction, and that's going to take 2,500 meters per second with an ion engine. <laughs> so that's not fun. So I take all this time to replot, but. Then eventually I discover why we don't have it in Kerbal Alarm Clock. You see, this doesn't have an SAS module on board. And without an SAS module, we can't time warp during the ion engine burn, meaning this is useless. We can't possibly do this burn. I'm not going to sit through however many days it's going to take. So, yeah, that is abandoned. This is an Attila supply mission. This is one of the spare supply missions for Mercury that we had sent. And so we are getting it closer to Mercury with that burn. And this is a Jupiter station that we had launched before that needs to do its mid-course adjustment, which is thankfully just 14 meters per second, which is very nice. And you can see it's resulting 
past there at Jupiter. Very close. I was checking the atmosphere to make sure that we're not too close. And so it's on its way. This is our Uranus mission. So we're just going through all the missions. Uh, here I'm just checking to make sure that the food, water, and oxygen recycling is working properly. And here I'm checking out our crew around Mars on Mars Station 1 plus Mars Vessel 1 and that their food, water, and oxygen situation is fine. So that's Durlaf and Desiski already at Mars and your pops with a companion Kerbal on his way to Mars or her way. The result of that correction burn left a lot to be desired. We're not really co-planar with everything else. I tried to get everything in plane with Phobos and Deimos basically. This is obviously not right, so we'll need another adjustment. Here is the orange lander, the first one that I had sent in the previous video. And it's doing its mid-course correction. I'm showing these so that we don't forget about these missions basically. Uh, you know. These are the missions that are on their way. We have to make sure that we remember everything like this this uh, Attila supply mission capturing now around Mercury. This capture burn was way late, unfortunately. So we kept burning well past periapsis here. We ultimately did manage to capture, but it was in a weird orbit, but workable. So it's there just in case we need more supplies. And this is the tug launch with the three tugs doing its thing. So. That looks like it'll be getting close to Mars properly. And this is a different tug that we have on the way. So lots of stuff happening all over the place. And here's that Lynx lander. Uh, the foil not looking quite as shiny as it did in the VAB, not in this light apparently. But there it goes doing its correction. And we also have the Mars station, the new Mars station. So alright, all that is on its way and with that I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.